Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we are solving systems of equation by substitution. So before this video, you most likely saw my other lesson where we were solving uh, systems of equations by graphing. And we learned that there were three special types of solutions we could have. One, where if the graphs are intersecting, the lines are intersecting, there is one solution. If the graphs actually overlap each other and they're the same line, it's infinitely many. And if the lines are parallel, there's no solution. So we're going to use this method that's called substitution to solve a system of equations. And you're going to see this process, and we're going to go through it about six times, some with special cases, some without. And you're going to see that we could do solve that same system maybe by graphing, and we would get the same result, or you might like this method even better. So the first situation is when we have one equation set equal to a variable. Now, substitution is all about replacing a, what a variable is equal to inside of the other equation for that variable. Here's what I mean. I have these two equations, y equals 2x plus 1. And in my second equation, I have x plus 3y equals negative 12. And you can see I've highlighted that y is equal to 2x plus 1. And what that means is that everywhere I see y in the other equation, I'm going to get to substitute in for y everything I know y is equal to. Now, in this first situation, this is really nice because y is already set equal to 2x plus 1. It's already solved for y. We know solve for y means the equation looks like y equals. So what ends up happening here is I'm going to take this second equation and I'm going to write x plus 3. And instead of writing y, which is 3 times y, it's going to be now 3 times everything y is equal to. I'm substituting 2x plus 1 in for y. And I need to put parentheses around that entire expression and then bring down equals negative 12. Now remember, substitution means that you're replacing something with something of equal value. Like if you were to go to the diner and you said, I would like to substitute my french fries for a baked potato or I would like to substitute my french fries for onion rings. They would swap that out. You wouldn't get both. So notice here there's no y in this new equation. And after you get this equation, you then go ahead and you're able to solve for x because notice you don't have two different variables now in this equation. You only have one. So let's take a look at a couple of problems of this particular type. And they're gonna be both up here in yellow. So let's take a look. This first equation, x, equals 3y minus 9. That means everywhere we see x in the other equation, in this one spot here, we're going to substitute in everything that x is equal to. So this second equation now becomes 5, in parentheses, 3y minus 9, close my parentheses, and so notice that's my 5x here, and now I'm going to just continue to bring down the rest of the equation, minus 2y equals 7. Notice I only have the variable for y now in my equation, which means now after doing some distributing, combining like terms, and solving, I end up getting a value for y. But remember in our graphing uh, systems of equations video, the solution was an ordered pair. So if you have the y coordinate, well, I now need the x coordinate. And if you need to solve for x, you could technically use either equation, but if you need to solve for x, you may as well use the equation that is already x equals. And since we now know what y is equal to, y is equal to 4, I simply plug that 4 in for y, I do my solving. Now, remember, the solution is an ordered pair, and an ordered pair is always written as the x value, comma, the y value. So my solution is now 3, 4. 3, 4 is an ordered pair that would give you a true statement for either one of these equations. So if I showed a really quick example of that, and let's say I plugged in a 3 for x, and a 4 for y. Let's see, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 9 is 3. It works. If I plug in a 3 and a 4 here, 5 times 3 is 15. 2 times 4 is 8. 15 minus 8 is 7. It works. OK, let's take a look here. Now, in this one, the second equation has the variable by itself. So y is equal to everything that is 2x minus 4. So that means in the first equation, wherever I see the y, I'm going to substitute in everything that y is equal to. So let's take a look. In this first equation now, that would become negative 6x plus 3. 
then it's going to be open parentheses 2x minus 4 equals negative 12. So in this case, the variable, the equation that was already set equal to a variable happened to be the second equation. It doesn't matter. We're going to go ahead and distribute. And something we're going to notice special about this equation is that my variables end up simplifying out and I'm left with negative 12 equals negative 12, which is actually a true statement. And remember what the solutions are when you have a true statement in an equation. That's when it's infinitely many solutions. In a basic equation, it would be all real numbers, we would be able to say. But in this case, it's infinitely many. So what, is, what do you think that means about the lines of these equations if I was to graph them? Well, if it's infinitely many, remember me, that means that if I was to graph these two equations, they're actually going to be the exact same line. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the second situation where neither of the equations are actually set equal to a variable. So here you can see both of them are in standard form. 2x plus y equals 10 and 4x plus 2y equals negative 3. And if I take a look at these two equations, 2x plus y equals 10, I might say, you know what, neither of them are x equals or y equals, but this first equation here might actually be really easy to get y by itself. So we should notice that all we have to do to get y by itself in this first equation is subtract 2x. And now, if I create that equation where it's now y is equal to negative 2x plus 10, I'm able to now substitute in everything y is equal to into the other equation. So this now second equation becomes 4x plus 2 times negative 2x plus 10 equals negative 3, and I would be able to go ahead and solve like I showed you before. Okay. So now we are going to take a look at these two problems. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at these two problems in green. So both of these systems do not have a y equals or x equals, but if I look at this first system here, 4x plus 5y equals 11, and y minus 3x equals negative 13, I think it's going to be pretty obvious to us that this second equation is going to be really easy to get y by itself. So just by adding 3x on both sides, I end up getting y equals 3x minus 13. So that means everything y is equal to is going to get substituted in for y into the other equation. So now instead of 4x plus 5y equals 11, it will look like 4x plus 5 times 3x minus 13 equals 11. We know the deal here. We go ahead and distribute, combine like terms, solve, and we end up getting our x-coordinate. Now we know we need a uh, coordinate pair as a solution, so if we have our x, we now need to solve for y, and the easiest way to solve for y is use the y equals equation you already have. We substitute in our x value of 4, and then we're able to get y is equal to negative 1, which means our solution is 4, negative 1. Now, Something else to just think about then, that would mean if I was to graph these two equations because there is a solution, that means that those lines are just simply intersecting. Next one, x plus y equals negative 5. Now technically, I could get x by itself really easy by subtracting y, or I can get y equals uh, y by itself by, subtra by subtracting x rather. So either method is completely fine, and what I ended up doing here is I decided to get x by itself. So to get x by itself, I subtracted y on both sides. Either method will work though, guys, I promise you. And so that means where I see x in my other equation, I can substitute everything x is equal to. And again, notice when you have um, more of an expression, you need to make sure you put parentheses around that expression. Then it's business as usual, we are distributing, combining like terms, solving for y. This solution of getting y equals 0 is really important. It reminds us that 0 is an answer, okay? 0 doesn't mean there's no solution. You're not doing anything wrong. And then, of course, now solving for x, substituting in that 0 for y in that x equals equation, and then we end up getting negative 5. And also something to keep in mind, notice your solution is always the x comma the y value, not the order you solve them in necessarily, but whatever the x value is, comma, the y value. Our third case and the last case, both equations are set equal to a variable. And in this case, you're going to see they're actually both set to the same variable. y is equal to x plus 5, and y is equal to x minus 3. 
That means all of those expressions I just highlighted are all equal to each other, okay? That's, this is actually the, always the easiest problem. And for some reason, my students get tripped up on this one every single year without fail. So if y is equal to x plus five and y is also equal to negative x plus three, then think about it. What you're really doing here is you're saying all of this x plus five gets plugged in for y into that equation. And so your equation actually now just becomes x plus five equals negative x plus three, and then the rest is history. So now for these last two problems, x equals 3y minus 6, x equals y plus 2. Again, they're both solved for x, which means that since x is equal to 3y minus 6, and x is also equal to y plus 2, and that means 3y minus 6 is equal to y plus 2. Solve for y. You can see I had to cover up some errors there. Once you get y is 4, you now need to solve for x. And the good news is you get to use either equation. And it's probably the second equation that's easier to work with, but either one will be fine. Substitute in that 4, and we get 6 as our solution for x. And so our final answer becomes 6, 4. Last one, these are both solved for y. y is equal to 2x plus 5. y is equal to 2x minus 5. They're both set equal to y. So that means 2x plus 5 is equal to 2x minus 5. But now, a special case here, guys. We go to subtract 2x, we're left with 5 equals negative 5. Is that a true statement? Definitely not. And so before, we dealt with a true statement. That's infinitely many. And now we're looking at a false statement, which means there is no solution. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.